I'm back with another Blackstone pizza oven. I didn't care for the last two, which used burners below the stone. This Blackstone Ligero looks promising for two main reasons, a budget-friendly price point and a more balanced burner placement. Could this be the winning ticket? Let's test it out. Blackstone has perfected the game of fitting as many things as possible inside the smallest box. The cheaper a pizza oven costs, the longer the setup takes. I stand by that rule. 12 total screws for the legs and 8 for the door. I had to break out the instructions for the door hinge assembly, which was a bit wonky. Five AA batteries power the stone rotation and ignition. Then, all we need to do is place the stone into the oven and connect a 1-pound propane tank. An adapter is sold separately for 20-pound tanks. For the price, I really wish it came with it. I quickly noticed two issues. A dent along the top rim almost looks like it was painted over and the front door seems to have a poor paint job. Moving inward, we have a bigger problem. The turntable is clearly bent at an angle and very wobbly. Just listen to the screeching sound it makes. I reached out to Blackstone about this, and they instructed me to submit my serial number for warranty registration. After a few more back and forth emails, we determined the issue was actually the shaft that holds the turntable. They opted to send a whole new main body. The materials used for the body of the Blackstone Ligero are a bit unique compared to most pizza ovens. A glossy black steel shell with an inlaid thermometer on top. My first impression is that the overhead room is severely lacking, but it should at least help retain some heat. I used my peels and temp guns with my right hand, but the door handle is also on the right side so right-handed people might find the door a bit awkward to use. This is the first time Blackstone designed an oven with the burner at stone level, rather than underneath it, which should provide more top-down heat for an even bake. But after firing it up, the burner doesn't seem to be that strong. The flames don't get very high, so my hope for this being able to reach really hot temperatures is quickly fading. I tracked the temperature in five-minute intervals on a 44-degree Fahrenheit evening. Unfortunately, it struggled to get much past 700 degrees. You can get up to 760 degrees by waiting upwards of 45 minutes, which is what I did for my first Neapolitan. I knew this was too low for Neapolitan, but I continued anyway, baking it for a minute and 50 seconds. I mean, it's not the worst-looking pizza I've made, but the bottom? Oh, no. I let the stone cool off a bit and launched a New York at 547, which is generally a very good temperature for this style of pizza. But I quickly realized the bottom was struggling for color again. This oven seems to have the opposite problem from their last two models. It's not a complete loss, though. You can even up the bake by raising the stone temp a lot higher. This was a pretty decent pizza, but the method to achieve it is less than ideal. The stone temperature drops significantly between bakes. I also noticed rust spots appearing in a few places after just three days. After seeing the Blackstone Ligero announced, I thought this would be the first Blackstone pizza oven that I recommend just based on how it was designed. But the burners need more oomph in order to compete with the $300 price point. I take the Solo Pie Prime any day over this. It gets hotter, has way more interior room to maneuver, has a stronger burner, and the build quality is much better. Oh, and it's cheaper.